Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the Indian general elections of 2024 and why the opposition made a mistake in allowing the Modi government to come back to power. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to Global Nationalism, where I support nationalism in my country, India, and in all countries around the globe. Today I'm going to be talking about the uh, a major historical event which is the Indian general election of 2024. It is a historical event because it was, as usual for India, the world's largest democratic election, and it brought back to power India's uh, Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, for the third term, the first Prime Minister since Jawaharlal Nehru to serve three consecutive terms. The opposition have as an alliance got less seats than the government the NDA government which has about 290 seats and the, the India alliance has around 230 seats and the BJP itself has 240 seats so yeah this was a win for the BJP but it is a not at all up to the expectations Narendra Modi Prime Minister just said that they are aiming for a 400 seat uh, election victory and I want to explain how the opposition ganged up on him and along with foreign media uh, tried to I think do what you could call a regime change operation against the government so yeah let's get started uh, so, let's see what Congress did. Uh, Rahul Gandhi uh, promised cash transfer through slogans, and now women are queuing up outside the Congress party offices across many states in the country with guarantee cards promising them one lakh if rupees if voted to power. Vibor Anand, a New Delhi-based lawyer, has leveled the charges of bribery against the Congress party. New reports said that the Congress had distributed guarantee cards or promissory notes to several households promising one lakh every year to the woman head of every poor family for voting them in power. According to Vibor Anand, Congress committed an offense under Section 123, Subsection 1 of the Representation of People Act in 1951 in the recently concluded general elections, which amounts to gross corrupt practices with the sole intention of bribing voters. Elections in India are governed under the Representation of People Act 1951, according to Section 123 of the RP Act. Bribery is any gift, offer, or promise by a candidate or his agent, or by any other person with the consent of a candidate of inducing a person to stand or not to stand as, or to withdraw or not to withdraw from being a candidate at an election, or an elector to vote or refrain from voting at an election, or as a reward to a person for having to so stood or not stood, or for an elector for having voted or refrained from voting. Also in UP, uh, there was a loss for the BJP where they had a, a low bar performance. The state BJP leadership has sought a seat-wise report from the local leaders in detail the reasons behind the loss, where it failed to retain its seats, and also where the victory margins of the party nominees declined sharply. The decision to seek seat-wise reports was taken after the state leadership was flooded with complaints of internal sabotage with losing candidates from different parts of the state. According to sources in the BJP, more than a dozen party candidates who lost the polls from respective constituencies sent reports to state leadership. Many of the senior leaders of their own party not only did not campaign for them, but tacitly supported their rivals leading to their defeat. Sources said that losing candidates had used terms like internal sabotage and devil in disguise in their reports. My own party leader stabbed me in the back, said a losing candidate in his report. So we can see that even uh, within the BJP, there was a conspiracy against the government. And now let's look at what social media is doing. Uh, YouTube creators were affected by purported content bans and have turned 
to social media to demand action against what they perceive as biased treatment by YouTube India and relevant ministries. Ajit Bharti, editor of the New Indian Rohit Rohan Dua, TV journalist Sushant Sinha, the Jaipur Dialogues media platform and YouTubers AKTK and Ankur Arya. However, their appeals have thus far gone unanswered. Um, among the employees of YouTube suspected of manipulating the youth algorithm, implementing arbitrary bans on 93 journalists and 42 channels that provided impartial coverage of the BJP during the recent election are five females and 12 males hailing from different states of India. The accusations suggest that whenever pro Modi creators mention opposition leaders or individuals from the India Alliance, their videos are flagged for inappropriate content and demonetized. This shows that YouTube was uh, being was censoring pro Modi voices interfering in the election, and also and according to Open AI, which is an artificial intelligence company, not an Indian one. An Israeli firm called STOIC Stoic tried to disrupt Lok Sabha polls and peddled anti BJP agenda. Um, an Open AI investigation has revealed that an Israeli company, Stoic, attempted to interfere in the recent Lok Sabha elections in India by peddling an anti BJP election agenda. This covert influence operation called Zero Zeno was part of a larger effort by the firm to manipulate public opinion across various regions, including Canada, the United States, Israel, and Ghana. Like I said earlier, the globalists are, well, globalists. They're trying to interfere in various countries, not just India, which is why nationalists have to work together. Operation Overview. This operation used artificial intelligence to generate web articles and social media comments which are then disseminated across multiple platforms such as Instagram, Facebook and X. The content targeted audiences in India focusing on criticizing the ruling BJP and praising the opposition Congress party. Tactics and content. Uh, they employed a range of tactics to create the illusion of engagement and authenticity. The operation used AI to create fictional personas and social media bios. During the concerted efforts of the Zero Zeno campaign, the operation failed to attract engagement from real audiences. The majority of the interaction was limited to the audience's own inauthentic accounts. And various social media platforms, including Meta and X, have already disabled many of these accounts. Limiting the potential reach and impact of the campaign. And what did other countries like China do? According to Microsoft, China, they had warned in April that China may disrupt elections in India using AI, warns Microsoft. Software giant Microsoft has issued a warning regarding China's potential use of artificial intelligence to disrupt elections in several countries, including India, the United States, South Korea. So the US, in which this election this year needs to be wary. China is likely to utilize AI-generated content to advance its interests, particularly in the upcoming major elections. Well, that's uh, what the facts are. Social media was manipulated against the BJP. The opposition tried to allegedly uh, bribe the voters they definitely offered them money whether it counts as a bribe or not depends on what the judgment is in Devor Anand's case and um, as is well known the western media and thereby the international media which uh, goes on the same narrative as western media but biased against Modi they wanted him out and so this was a global conspiracy where now within india there were some advantages of bjp they were the richest party through electoral bonds and 
some of the media companies were uh, biased towards them. Not all. India today was not there. Uh, often Rajdeep Sardesai criticizes them and Rahul Kanwal is kind of neutral. But other channels like Public TV and uh, Z News, Sudhir Chaudhary were biased against them. Although Z News did try taking a more anti Modi stance during, during the elections. And also within the country, uh, within the Muslim community, there were fatwas given in mosques and masjids to uh, get Muslims to vote in as a religious group against the BJP. This is, um, I don't think this is morally correct. I don't think religious people should be telling people how to vote. Politics and religion have to be separate, at least in a secular democracy. But if, however, other religions are going to do this, I think the Hindu religion should do it too. And it can be, there is some moral good for that. I think it's true that we should take religion into account. Um, what religion gives people certain moral values. And if your religion uh, would does not allow you to vote for a certain candidate because their policies are not in line with your religious values, then you'd be hypocritical to vote for them. But other than that, I don't think you should think of voting for a candidate for to impose your religion's group's will over other religious groups, which is what uh, these Muslim preachers wanted. Now, I don't think that every Muslim who voted against the BJP was hostile towards other religions that wanted to dominate them, but I think their leadership was motivated by that. They created fake news that the BJP was going to change the constitution, take away their rights. There was a narrative that the uh, Citizen Amendment Act, the CAA, was anti-Indian Muslim, which is not, neither is national registry of citizenship. So, yeah, within the, Mus the leadership of the Muslim community, the religious leadership, there was propaganda against Modi. So we can see that, and even China was doing some stuff. So the fact that Modi still won with all this against him is remarkable. And it's a mistake on the part of the, co the opposition, especially the Congress. The Congress was making deals about uh, Rahul Gandhi being the next prime minister on Instagram. And they were basically really promoting the idea that he was gonna win. And, but they lost. They should have done more. I think they were trying to just uh, get uh, the BJP down below a majority and they thought that somehow they could wrangle some allies of the NDA and get Modi out of power, but he, they didn't. So the point of this video is to say that that was a mistake. Letting Prime Minister Modi remain in power is a blunder of the Congress and the opposition. If they had managed to get him out, then the BJP would be uh, quite powerless and they would be able to really uh, go against the government and maybe topple it. But that didn't happen. Narendra Modi survived this election and won his uh, most competitive election in his own district of Varanasi by 1.5 lakh votes. So, yeah, this was a mistake. You aimed for the prime minister or as it says you aim for the king and you missed now modi is going to be much harsher on uh terrorists on anti-national people on uh people who protest who uh, block streets who riot uh corrupt politicians and against enemy countries like China and Pakistan is going to be much more oppositional towards them and 
he was quite tolerant actually in the last 10 years he was not dictatorial as uh, some youtubers would say and he was uh trying to be make peace with others that's why he didn't go against uh the gandhis by arresting them in the national herald case or other corruption cases including robert vadras but now i think he's going to go after them and other politicians i hope he goes for broke and just really tries to clean up indian politics of corrupt politicians and i hope he also ends or at least uh severely degrades islamic terrorism in india and uh, terrorism by uh, Christians in the Northeast. Of course, it does. I don't mean that Christians in the Northeast are terrorists. They're not. They're most of them are just peaceful, ordinary people like every other religious group. But there are terrorist groups in the Northeast, and specifically in Banipur, that are uh, Christian in nature. I hope he defeats those. And yeah, I'm hopeful for this new administration and wish it good luck in this term and i on my part will be doing everything i can to help them come back to power in 2029 and yes that's all i wanted to say please share your thoughts in the comment section if you want to see other videos about major historical events click here if you want to see my previous video, click here. If you want to see the source I use for this video, click the link in the description below. Thank you for watching. One day, Mataram.